Hi everybody, this is Gary Dean with Sentiment Timing and this is our technical video report for Tuesday, June 11th, 2024. Um, so we saw a gap down this morning in the morning notes. I said I wouldn't be surprised to see a bid back up early. Um, but really my thinking on this, especially where they, they stopped it, I was check, I was I had my eyes on the 15 minute chart here. And we came down. So when we got this bounce here, I, I was kind of like, okay, well, this resistance is going to hold and we're going to come down and do a double test of this because we're going to hit the moving average. So I was actually looking short here. We, we had the, the move down, looked like it was going in play. We put our stop at entry and uh, we got stopped out. <laughs> so we didn't, uh, we didn't win or lose anything. And then when we were here, I actually put on a... Uh, a credit spread using actually when we are like in this area uh using the 65 and the 70 uh calls and that got washed out too so today was not a great day as far as with the uh the credit spreads because we weren't able to put in the uh it, the, the way that we normally do it where we 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 uh, sell the puts as well as we sell the calls. And then from there, we're able to put our stop in place. That is a, it's a break even because, you know, it's, it's either going to take out one or the other. It's not going to take out both. So the thing is, is that we're, you know, we, when we are up here, I, I was still thinking we we're going to do some backing and filling. And really my main reason was because we have the Fed meeting tomorrow and, you know, the, the S&P was up, has been up pretty good. And I'm figuring out they'll just take a little breather heading into the CPI numbers as well as uh, the Fed announcement. But that, obviously that was uh, that was the reading the wrong book. Um, now, why did this why did this make sense this turn? Well, if I would have taken two seconds out of my life and looked at where the 60 day moving average was, pretty much right here that's where we got the bounce so uh the bulls are you know they're they're going in this full you know hoping that the the fed is going to you know give them the softball and say that they're going to cut rates in in september i i don't know if they're going to do it i think they're going to keep with the de data dependent uh we'll, we'll have to see i think we're going to get a pretty good uh say vision of what's going to happen uh with the cpi numbers because if they come in hot I just don't see the, the Fed coming in saying that they're they're going to be cutting rates in September. So that could, if if the if the CPI numbers come in hot, then we we could see a very very fast move down to the fifty three hundred level. Now, if they come in okay, what's going to happen is we're probably going to make the move up to the to the uh, fifty four hundred. So that's the you know where, where we're looking now. What what wouldn't surprise me is maybe we come in neutral to a little hot. We dip down, maybe test the thirty, uh, the fifty three forty two, and then head up. And the only reason why I'm kind of saying that is it will give this some time to move up because I still and they, we could even break through it a little bit. But I still think that if they're if they're heading higher, uh, we are going to be heading up to the uh, uh, up to the fifty four hundred level. So this is it. But no matter like the bigger picture. Nothing, nothing has really changed. Uh, you know, we're, we're sitting here, we're figuring out where we are within this wave structure because we clearly have the five waves, one, two, three, four, five, but this may have been just a five of a three. Now we did an ABC, this is our four, and now we're making the five. And that's what I've been saying um, for quite some time because it was, you know, they, they, they had anybody that follows Elliott wave they had us handcuffed because like I said you can count five waves and 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 if you sit there and you're buying the dip on a wave four for the expectation of the wave five coming up and it ends up that this is done and we're coming all the way back down to the 5200 level uh you know you're gonna get caught so right now it, it's it seems like they're gonna try to make that move up to the 5400 level um, if they get above it, it uh, it's kind of, you know, I guess we're looking somewhere at the 5460. That's the top of this wedge. I've had this wedge in here uh, really probably since uh, since here. So going back into April 18th on it. Uh, and, and this is really what we're looking at here. So you can see this is our, if we're just going to kind of read it here, one, two, give you the bigger picture three four and now we're making the wave five here and as i said you know we're, we're scraping out the little ones here we may come all the way up to the 50 54 uh 
right around that 5430, 5460 in that area. But this will be the fifth wave. And, you know, we're, we're trading within this really big wedge. And if this wedge gets broken and it's going to play out, uh, we're, we're looking at a move coming, you know, somewhere down into the, to the 4,600. That's if it's going to follow this pattern. Me personally, I think there's a real lot of support at this 5,000 uh, level right in here. So I, I personally think that, you know, if, if we get the pullback, it's not going to be really that much uh, – that much below say that this low right here right around that 5,000 or yeah this is right around 5,000 but in any case that that's what I'm looking for and then from there we'll regroup and and just do the, the wave structures but from here you know we have these bearish divergences on the uh on the uh, daily chart um we have bearish divergences on on the, the, the 60 minute chart we had them on the 15-minute chart, but this last move right here kind of brought it up. But there, there's a lot of warning signs, and um, the NIAD, hang on, let me see some. Yeah, the NIAD still has this uh, this bearish divergence. This is what I, I showed um, everybody in, in the premium report today, that you can see when we get these NIAD divergences, it is a warning sign when... We, you know, if especially if we're making new highs. Now, here we didn't have a divergence here and we still got the big drop. But here we have a really, really big one. So it could fix itself. I'm not saying this is a... Uh, you know, definite where we're making the top and we're heading down because these I've seen them fix themselves. So it looks like we're having a divergence right here. And then all of a sudden the market breath picks up and, and they take out these highs. But in any case, um, we have, you know, so we have the sell signal on the uh, on the daily chart. I believe we have them on the weekly chart. Let me see. Um, hang on one second. Yep, here's the weekly chart, and here you can see where it did. that's that big rising wedge that I was, I was showing you. But look at the divergence here. So we have them on the weekly charts. We have them on the daily charts. We have them on the 60-minute chart. To me, I, I, you know, I, I just think the bulls are sticking their neck out on this one. And as I've said, it's a... You know, they, they were pricing in six rate cuts back at the October lows in 2023. Now they're hoping for one. And I, I just I, I don't understand what they're you know, if they really think we're going back to the the quantitative easing and interest rates going back to zero, um, they need to go dead back to school because it's not happening. What, the only way that's happening is if we are in a full blown recession. So um, that's about all I have for tonight. Have a great night and I'll talk to you guys in the morning.